Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Casey and I am the designer behind Pattern Scout. Today I am sharing a sew along for the Birch Vest pattern. The Birch Vest is a lined waistcoat with princess seams, a deep scoop neckline, and a button front closure. The construction on this is pretty straightforward, but I do have it listed as an intermediate pattern just because there are a few advanced techniques such as understitching, buttonholes, buttons, and that sort of thing. So if you're an adventurous beginner, you could probably do this, but it definitely has a few more advanced techniques. Now this pattern is fully lined and today I'm going to be sewing an option with facings and aligning. The original pattern release only featured a lined option. So just duplicating the bodice pieces for the shell of the vest and making a lining out of those. During testing, I had a few testers that expressed an interest in having facings as an option for this pattern. So I went ahead and created an expansion for the pattern. If you've already purchased the pattern, you will get this automatically. You'll get a notification in your email that the pattern has been updated. So be sure to check your email if you have already purchased the pattern and anyone who purchases the pattern now will automatically get the facings update as well. You can buy the pattern on my website, patternscoutstudio.com and I've put a link in the description below this video to the pattern if you would like to purchase it for yourself. The fabrics that I recommend for this vest are medium weight woven fabrics. I think that linen is a great fabric for this particular project. It is going to be easy to work with. You could also sew this out of a wool suiting or even a denim. I think it would also be great in a cotton twill or a corduroy. The version I'm planning to make today is going to be made out of some leftover corduroy that I had from a skirt that I made a couple of years ago. And I'm hoping that it'll be a cute little matching set with the vest and the skirt. For the lining fabrics, I recommend something lightweight. Again, a woven fabric, a non-stretch fabric is going to be ideal for this. So something like linen is going to be great. And again, you wanna keep those kind of lightweight for the lining, or you could use a satin or a silk lining. Another type of lining that's really popular for coat making is a rayon Bimberg. The lining that I'm planning to use for today's version is a black, I think polyester satin fabric that I found at a thrift store. So I found this about a year ago and snatched it up because I knew that eventually I probably would need it for a project. So I'm going to be using that as the lining of my corduroy vest. And you can check the pattern instructions for a little bit more information on the interfacing and the buttons that you'll need for this project. The Birch Vest comes in US sizes 0 through 30 with bust cup options available. And so a pattern bust cup option is a little bit different than your bra cup size. And you'll notice in the size chart for Pattern Scout patterns that there is a high bust measurement and a full bust measurement. And the difference between those two measurements is going to determine your cup size. So if you have a two inch difference between those measurements, you'll choose the B cup file three inches, you'll choose the C cup file, and then four inches, you'll choose the D cup file. And if the difference between your high bust and your full bust is greater than the cup sizes available in this pattern, then you may need to do a full bust adjustment. The pattern files are divided up by cup size. So once you figure out your cup size, you'll then print the corresponding pattern file. I also have a video here on my channel that walks you through printing and assembling PDF patterns. So I'll put a link to that up here in the cards and down in the description below this video if you're new to PDF patterns. I think we are good to go. Let's get started. For this project, I'm just going to be using an all-purpose thread from Guterman. Guterman is my favorite type of thread to use, and I'm going to be using a black that coordinates with my fabric. I'm also going to be using a Schmetz universal sewing needle, and I'm probably going to use somewhere between a 8012 and a 9014. My fabric is a little bit on the heavier side because it's a corduroy, and I think a little bit heavier needle will be a good application for this project. All right, so I've cut out all of my pieces and for the shell of this vest, you'll have four main pieces. So you're gonna have two center front bodice pieces, two side front bodice pieces, two center back pieces, and two side back pieces. And if you're doing the lined version of this vest, you're just gonna duplicate those pieces for the lining. But today we're gonna be sewing the facings version, which also has a lining, but the pattern pieces are a little bit different. So for the facings, we have 
Two center front bodice pieces again. We've just duplicated the center front bodice piece, except this one is interfaced. So that's the right side of fabric there and the interfacing is adhered to the wrong side of fabric. We'll have two front armhole facings. Again, these have been interfaced on the wrong side. Two bottom hem facings for the front. And then for the back, we're gonna have the back neckline and armhole facing. And this is an all-in-one facing for the back and two bottom hem facings for the back. And then for the lining for the facings version of this vest, you'll have two side front bodice pieces. And these are slightly modified because the facings will go on the bottom and the armhole of this. We also have two center back bodice pieces, again modified for attaching the facings, and two side back bodice pieces, which have also been modified for attaching the facings. So the first thing we're gonna do is attach the center front bodice to the side front bodice on both sides. And we're gonna attach these right sides together, lining up this princess seam first here. Now there are notches on the pieces that help you align this along this curve. So what I like to do is align the bottom first and the notches here at the bottom of the waist. Then I'll align the top with the armhole here and I'm just going to ease in the curve along this princess seam. Just like that. You can see how that kind of looks from the top. It kind of looks like it wants to waffle up a little bit, but it'll be fine. So I'm gonna sew this with a 3 8 inch seam allowance along that entire princess seam, and I'll do the same thing for the other side of the front bodice. I'm gonna do the same thing to line up the back bodice, but I also have a center back seam on the back bodice. So first I'm going to align the side back pieces here along these back princess seams. Again, I wanna make sure that I get the right ones. And then I'm just gonna place these right sides together and pin along here. I'll do the same thing for the other side. And again, when I get to that curved portion, I just want to align it with the shoulder first and then ease in that curve. Once you have those two sides pinned, you can go ahead and sew these with a 3 8 inch seam allowance as well, but I like to just go ahead and pin the center back together just to save myself running back and forth between the machine and my cutting table here. So I'm just gonna open that up and I'm gonna place these right sides together and pin along that center back seam. And then I'll sew that with a 3 8 inch seam allowance as well. If you're making the version with the lining, you'll do the same exact steps for the lining pieces. assemble the lining and facing pieces for this version. First, I'm going to take my side front lining piece and attach the armhole facing for that side. So I've got my armhole facing here and the straight edge right here is gonna be at the bottom. And this is gonna be a little bit awkward because we are basically trying to assemble this so that the facing will be here at the top. Find the piece that matches the curve when both pieces are right side up. Let me make sure my lining is right side up, yes. Then I'm gonna fold this over and basically have to pin it around this reverse curve. So I'm gonna have to kind of ease in the curve here around this armhole facing. So I'll start by pinning it at the bottom of the armhole first. Then I'm going to pin it to the top of the armhole, aligning that little straight edge at the top of the bodice piece here with the edge at the end of the facing that in place and then I'll just ease in around that curve. It'll be kind of scrunchy looking but basically I'm going to just sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance along that seam there. I'll do the same thing for the other side front bodice piece and front armhole curve. Now for the back bodice pieces for the lining, they're gonna be assembled kind of similar to the way we did the shell. 
So I'm going to find my center back and my side back. And you just want to make sure that you're attaching the curved portion here to the curved portion on the center back. So I'm first going to, again, attach the side back to the center back, side back to center back, and then I'll attach those at the center. This fabric is quite slippery. I'm just taking my time. I'm using pins liberally if I need to, and um, just want to make sure that I ease in really nicely around that curve. So actually before I attach these at the center back, I'm going to go ahead and sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance to attach the side back to the center back. And that way, because this fabric is so slippery, it'll just make it a little easier to attach them at the center back. So I'll do that first. For the lining pieces, I am going to be using my serger. This fabric is kind of, it kind of frays a little bit, actually a lot. So I think serging that'll just help kind of clean that up a little bit, make it a little easier to work with. Now that I have the back lining sewn together and the side front sewn to the armhole, I can attach the bottom facings for these. So for the side front, I'm going to just attach the facing right sides together with the bottom. So you wanna make sure that, okay, this one's not the right one. So you wanna pick the one that basically follows the shape of the facing. So this one's kind of going downward. And then I'm just going to flip this right sides together pin this and I'll sew along here. I'll do that for both of the side front pieces and then I will press them down and do the understitching the same way that I did for the armhole facing. For the bottom back facing, I first need to sew these together, right sides together. So these have a notch on them. If you kind of lose track of where the facing should go, the notch is kind of closer to the center. So this one would actually go here. Yep. And that one would go there. So then I need to attach these first right sides together. I've attached the back bottom facings together at the center back. I'm just going to press that seam open. And now I can attach this to the bodice. It's going to curve. The curve will be on the bottom of this. So you want to make sure that that's on the bottom. Then we're going to flip this right sides together and we're going to pin this. So you're just going to have to ease in this facing to the bottom, matching up the notches and the end. And I think my lining may have gotten cut a little short because I may have trimmed too much off when I was serging those pieces together, but I'm gonna make it work. All right, it is the next day and I am well rested, ready to get back to this vest. Now I want to work on putting the neck line and armhole facing on the back bodice. This is gonna be pretty similar to the way we did for the front armholes on the side front bodice. I'm gonna to have to kind of ease in that reverse curve. So I'll just pin that generously around that entire curve. So with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, and then I'll press it flat and understitch that lining to the facing seam allowance. Then I need to attach the center front facing to the side front facing and lining. And that will be attached in the same way that we attach the side front bodice to the center front bodice for the shell. But I think I should be able to finish this pretty quickly today. I do believe this is a project you can do in a day, even with the facings and the lining, which require a little bit of extra piecing. I've also been kind of playing around with the lighting here in my sewing room to try to get a little bit more natural vibe. It's so hard to light indoors when it's gloomy outside and have it look kind of natural and I don't know, it's just a vibe. I'm, I'm trying to get the vibe going in here. So I kind of played around with that a little bit today. Maybe the lighting will be a little bit better for us. Okay, I'm gonna get started. For this neckline and armhole facing on the back bodice lining, I recommend starting at the top center and working your way down to the armhole and then starting again and working your way down to the armhole on the opposite side. I think this is just gonna ensure that that facing stays really nice and even on both sides, just in case things get a little bit wonky as you're sewing this because you are sewing so many curves in this thing, it can get a little bit uh, technical. And I'm also gonna be doing these on the serger again. Um, I'm doing all of the lining pieces, including the facings on the serger. But when I attach it to the shell, I'm gonna use my sewing machine. So I have now attached the facing to the top of the back bodice lining. And it did get a little wonky in some places. Like you can see, I've got a little bit of puckering here, which I think is okay. I don't think it's a huge deal, but it is really, this is like one of those things in sewing that is actually kind of difficult. Most things I'm like, oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> but sewing around reverse curves is kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. 
Um, but I think it's okay just because this fabric is so slippery and it is so difficult to work with. Um, one thing that I could have done differently here actually is basted this on first and then kind of gone back and fixed the areas like this that were kind of puckering in this area and this area and this area here. And then I could take that over to the serger once I basted it. So that's, a, that's something that I've done before too that works really well. Um, but I was kind of in a hurry on this one and I went ahead with the serging, but I think it's okay. So now I just want to press this lining nice and flat. And then I'm just gonna edge stitch the lining all the way around the perimeter here to the seam allowance. My front bodice pieces fared a little bit better. I'm just gonna press those again, the same way I did for the back. And I wanna make sure that that seam allowance is toward the side seam. And again, I'm just gonna go through and edge stitch all the way down the length of this princess seam. I'll do that for both sides of the front bodice. The next step is going to be to start assembling the bodice of both the shell and the lining. So first I'm gonna take the shell pieces and I'm going to attach them at the shoulders, right sides together, and then I will press those seam allowances open. And I'll do the same thing for the lining pieces, attaching them right sides together at the shoulders. Now I'm ready to attach the lining to the shell. So I've got the shell laid face up, right side of fabric facing up. And I just wanted to lay the lining on top of that and match up all of the edges. So I'm gonna start at the center back neckline. I'm gonna sew around the neckline, down the center front opening and all the way down to this point here at the bottom hem of the vest. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side, all the way around, down the center front and down to this point down here. So I just wanna pin this to make sure that everything is even. Now that I have this attached and graded, I just want to press the lining away from the bodice as much as I can. And I'm going to understitch the lining to the seam allowance around where I just sewed. This is gonna prevent the lining from rolling out and becoming visible on the exterior. And it's just gonna give a neater finish around those edges. Now I'm not gonna be able to get all the way to the corners and that's okay. I kinda just wanna make sure I get as much as possible along these edges understitched. I'm actually gonna do this from this side. So I just wanna press this so that the seam allowance is facing toward the lining and the facings. So you can see I've just pressed that seam allowance toward the facing and the linings. And I decided to grade this instead of trimming. If this were a lighter weight fabric, I probably would just go ahead and trim all of the seam allowance down. But since this is a little bit heavier, having this extra fabric here is gonna assist with that understitching and kind of help keep things flat. So I'll do that around the whole perimeter of where I just sewed, and then I'm gonna understitch. I'm also starting my understitching about an inch away from that bottom corner. And I'm sewing this from the exterior so that I can make sure I get it nice and neat on the exterior. Once I get to a point where I feel like I can't go any further without making this super wrinkly, I'm gonna stop and backstitch. And I'll move to the other side of the corner that I can't get to. And I just wanna make sure that I keep that seam allowance pressed toward the lining. So I'm just feeling underneath for that to make sure it's staying in place. Turn one side, right side out so you can kind of see how that's starting to look. And it's hard to see on this particular fabric, but my understitching is right along that edge. And it just kind of helps keep things pinned to the interior for the lining. And then here is that other side. I have not turned this right side out yet. And you can see kind of here, I didn't go all the way to the corner on the corners because you don't really need to go all the way to the corner. You just need this to kind of keep that lining tacked to the interior. Um, the same thing down here at this corner. 
So now I've got this turned inside out again and I've got right sides facing again. And I'm just going to align the rest of the edges. This time I wanna sew around the armholes and the remainder of the front hem and the back hem. Once I get those areas sewn with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, I'm also gonna do understitching on those areas too. And the reason we did this front half first is just because it was easier to get in there and do the understitching. And so again, with especially with the armholes, it's gonna be really difficult to get, it's probably impossible to get all the way around the armhole in a really neat fashion. So just get as far as you can. I usually start at the side seam and work my way toward the shoulder, you probably will not get very close to the shoulder and that's okay. Um, just understitch as much as you can, again, with that seam allowance pressed toward the lining and stitching the lining to the seam allowance. You also do not want to do the side seams. So you wanna leave this part open on the side seams on both the front bodice and the back bodice because we'll finish that part in a later step. And the reason that I stopped the understitching about an inch away from this bottom point here is just to make it easier to line up this edge to sew the rest of this bottom part here. Okay, so I have all of the understitching done on this. I'm ready to turn this right side out. And it may take a little bit of finessing because especially at the shoulders, it's kind of narrow to pull that through. So just be patient. And it's okay to get a little aggressive with it too. And the last thing I wanna do is just go around and press all of the edges nice and flat. And the understitching is really going to help us out a lot with keeping this flat and keeping that edge really nice and crisp without having a visible, visible top stitch on the exterior of the garment. And I'm pressing this from the interior just because this is corduroy. It does have a little bit of a nap to it. So I don't want the pressing marks to show on the exterior of the garment, but I'm not as worried about it on the interior. Okay, so it is actually a few days later. It's about three days later. I did not finish this the other day. You can do this project in a day, but y'all, it was so gloomy in here. It was a soup day, so I went and made myself some gumbo on Friday, and today is Monday. So here's what is up next for this project. I have the vest. It's all turned out and pressed really nice and flat around all of the edges. So we need to attach the side seams. To do this, we wanna keep the shell right sides together so the lining is on the outside, and we wanna line up the shell side seams only. So the shell side seams are basically gonna be sandwiched between the lining side seams. And I just kind of want to line these up and then I'm going to kind of shimmy my way to the top and align the facings at the armhole and make sure that they're aligned at their side seam. And I'm going to start there and I'm going to sew down the length of those facings and the side seam of the exterior and then make my way down to the facings of the bottom hem and sew those together. And I'm going to leave the lining unsewn. So essentially what you're doing here is just closing the side seam of the shell and leaving a little opening in the side seam of the lining. I'm gonna do this for both sides of the vest. Then once I have the side seam sewn, I can turn this right side out so that the shell is now on the exterior and stitch the lining close. What I like to do too is kind of pull the lining taut and the seam allowance of the lining will kind of present itself once you pull that little taut. I like to pre-press the seam allowance there. Um, that's just gonna make it easier to hand stitch the lining close. You could also do this on a machine, it wouldn't be as neat, but I'm gonna hand stitch this lining close with a ladder stitch so that it looks nice and seamless on the interior. Again, doing this for both sides of the lining. All right, so originally I was thinking that I would not do any top stitching around the edges of this vest. However, I did find this picture of a vest from Free People called the Charlie Cord Vest and it has top stitching around the edges. I really do think that it adds a nice detail to the corduroy and it looks like they have about, I don't know, this might be about a quarter inch, even a centimeter from the edge. So I'm studying this photo a little bit, but I really like the way this looks. And 
with this black corduroy, it, it is really kind of tough to see on camera, which I apologize for, but I wanted to make something that I wanted to make and I had this black and I wanted a black corduroy vest. Um, but I think it will add a nice little extra detail to this vest to have the top stitching around the edges and kind of give it a little bit more finished look for this particular fabric. It is definitely optional. You don't have to top stitch, but I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna do kind of a wider top stitch. And one more thing, I think it'll also help really kind of smash down the edges. That's like a technical term. If I wasn't gonna top stitch this, I would probably do a little bit of stitch in the ditch at some of the seams, like the princess seams and the side seams and the shoulder seams to really kind of compress that a little bit more so that it has a little bit more crisp edge. Um, because the edges are staying turned out just fine, I'm not worried about that, but I think it'll really, like I said, I think it'll just give it a nice finished edge. So with the pattern, you will get buttonhole guides for each of the sizes that you can just kind of lay on top here. Um, you can cut these little slots open and mark your buttonhole locations. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and measure them out just because I feel like that'll be a little bit more accurate. So I'm gonna put four evenly spaced buttonholes along the right front bodice. And the buttonholes will be installed horizontally and that'll kind of add a little bit of extra range of motion across the bust. I've spaced my buttonholes roughly three inches apart and I'm going to start the buttonhole about 3 8 inch from the edge of the front bodice. Thank you guys so much for watching this sew along and I'd like to give a huge thank you to everyone who has purchased the pattern so far. I really appreciate it and it gives me so much joy to know that you guys are sewing up the garments that I create and enjoying them so thank you. I feel like I've been fighting the light or lack thereof this entire video. It has been so gloomy here in Lansing for, for days like I feel like we've had a month or more of just really gloomy weather. Hey don't play with that right now please. All right, we may just have to deal with the squeaking in the background. I've put a link to the pattern on my website in the description below this video. So if you click that link, it'll take you right to the product listing on my website. As a reminder, this is a digital PDF format pattern. So after you purchase, you'll get an email with download links. And if you're new to PDF patterns, I have also put a link in the description to my video on how to print and assemble PDF patterns. So be sure to check that out. And if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see more from me, please be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. I've been working on this vest pattern for a while, like probably over a year, just kind of playing around with it here and there when I had time. It definitely fills a hole that I had in my wardrobe for a 90s inspired vest. So I'm very excited about that. And as of releasing this pattern and filming this tutorial, it is winter. So it's the middle of winter and I'm definitely gonna be wearing these more as a layering 
string piece, but I can so see wearing this in the summertime alone with jeans or shorts. I think there are a lot of possibilities with this type of garment. It's very transitional, easy to be paired with a lot of different items in your wardrobe, I hope. So anyhow, I hope you enjoy the pattern. Thank you again for purchasing the pattern and supporting my business. I really appreciate it. It means so much to me. And yeah, I think that's all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye.